In the last lesson, we've established that the modified duration can be used to calculate the approximate change in price of a bond given a change in yield of the bond. If we plot this graphically, the negative or the modified duration would be the slope of this straight line. The actual price to yield to maturity relationship, however, is not a straight line. Rather, it follows a convex curve as shown. So, as it turns out, Instead of following the long-drawn method of weighing each cash flow to find the Macaulay duration and subsequently the modified duration, we can simply use an approximate method to find the slope of this line. We call this the approximate modified duration. The premise of this is simple. First, we find the value of the bond at its current yield using the discounted cash flow method. We call this value V0. We find the value of the bond if its yield drops by a small amount. We call this V minus. And the value of the bond if its yield rises by the same magnitude, we call V plus. The slope of the line that intersects V minus and V plus is the negative of the approximate modified duration. It can be calculated using this formula. You may have noticed that these two lines are not exactly parallel. This is why we call this the approximate modified duration. In order for the approximation to be accurate, the change in yield to maturity should be very small and the precision used in the calculations should be high. Let's go back to our last example from the previous lesson and calculate the approximate modified duration of the bond. Recall that we have calculated the annual modified duration as 1.765. This was derived from the Macaulay duration, which was a tedious process of calculating the weights of each cash flow. Let's see if the approximate modified duration can simplify the process. We use a one basis point change in yield to maturity for our calculations. Our first step is to calculate V0 at 12% yield to maturity. Although we are already given the price of the bond at this yield, we need a higher precision for our calculations as the change in yield is very small. So using 6% as the discount rate as the coupons are paid semi-annually, we get V0 as 948.0234. Next we calculate V-, where the yield to maturity is lower by one basis point. Again, we have to halve this as the coupons are paid semi-annually. So, using a discount rate of 5.995%, we get V- as 948.1907. And similarly, we calculate V+, where the yield to maturity is higher by one basis point. Using a discount rate of 6.005%, we get V+, as 947.8561. And if we plug in all the figures into the formula, we get an approximate modified duration of 1.765. This is actually the same as the modified duration that we have calculated in the previous lesson. So, we've established that both the modified duration and approximate modified duration can be used to calculate the approximate change in price of a bond given a change in yield of the bond. The approximate modified duration is simply a shortcut to calculate the modified duration. Regardless, both methods are only the means to calculate the approximate change in price. As you can see from the graph, the actual relationship between the price and yield to maturity is a convex curve, so using a straight line to calculate is only an approximation. The actual price should be a little higher than the price estimated using the modified duration method. Now, this is not much of an issue if the change in yield is small. However, if the change is large, this becomes an issue. The modified duration method will severely underestimate the magnitude of change due to the convexity of the curve. To solve this, we can introduce a second term based on the bond's convexity. By taking into account both a bond's duration, which we call the first order effects, and convexity, the second order effects, we can improve an estimate of the change in price 
due to a change in the bond's yield. This is especially so for larger changes in yield to maturity. So, what is convexity and how do we calculate it? Convexity is a measure of the curvature of the price yield relation. The more curved it is, the higher the convexity measure and the greater the convexity adjustment to the duration based estimate of the change in price. A bond's convexity can be estimated with this formula. Now, let's illustrate all that we've learned with an example. A fixed coupon bond with 15 years to maturity pays out 8% coupon annually. The bond's current yield to maturity is 7.4%. Firstly, we calculate the full price of the bond per 100 of par value at the current yield to maturity of 7.4%. Using the discounted cash flow method, we discount all the cash flows by the current yield to maturity of 7.4%. This gives us the original price, or V0, of 105.3293 per 100 par. Now, let's calculate V- minus and V+, plus using a one basis point decrease and increase in yield. This will allow us to calculate the approximate modified duration and the approximate convexity later. V- minus is the price when the yield is 7.39%. Using discounted cash flow, we derive a price of 105.4215. V- plus is the price when the yield is 7.41%. We derive a price of 105.2373 for this. Next, we calculate the approximate modified duration. Just plug all the figures we have into the formula and we get 8.7488. So the slope of this line is minus 8.7488. Note that the change in yield to maturity here is one basis point. One basis point is 0.01%, which numerically is 0 0.0001. Make sure you get the number of decimal places correct. And to estimate the convexity of the curve, we calculate the approximate convexity. Again, we plug in the figures into the formula and we get a figure of 94.94. You do not need to understand exactly what this figure represents. Just know that the higher the figure is, the more curved the line is. Now that we have all the figures we need, here's where the fun begins. With the modified duration and the convexity of the bond, we can estimate the price change for a wider range of changes in yield of the bond. We are no longer constrained to small changes in yield as we are now making convexity adjustments. With that, let's estimate the price change resulting from a 100 basis point increase in the yield to maturity of the bond. We approximate the modified duration with the approximate modified duration that we have calculated and the convexity with the approximate convexity as well. The change in yield to maturity here is 1% or 0.01. So, if we plug in all the figures, the modified duration tells us that the price should decrease by around 8.75% while the convexity adjustment tells us to adjust this up by 0.47%. This gives us a net decrease in price of 8.27%. The absolute drop in price is therefore 8.715 per 100 par. Let's verify this using discounted cash flow. With a discount rate of 8.4%, which is a 100 basis point increase in yield, we get a new price of 96.6583. So the actual drop in price should be 8.671 per 100 par. As you can see, the estimated decrease in price with convexity adjustment is actually quite close to the actual decrease in price. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.